Well, as U.S. troops prepare to leave Afghanistan, a recently le leaked report suggests what America fears the most. Not only is the U.S. pulling out of Afghanistan without a clear victory, but the Taliban is poised to rise back to power. This proves that a decade-long war may have had little impact in actually defeating the Taliban, at least not enough to have a real lasting impact. Now, this report called State of the Taliban 2012 was produced by a secretive U.S. military op special operations unit. It was leaked to a couple of news outlets and reportedly is based on the 27,000 interrogations of 4,000 Taliban and al-Qaeda prisoners. Despite this, U.S. and NATO officials are dismissing it. So what does this all mean for relations between the U.S. and Afghanistan, and why isn't it being taken seriously? Well, to talk more about this, I spoke to Matthew Aid, intelligence specialist and author of the book. Um, you see right there on your screen, The Secret Century, The Untold History of the National Security Agency. And I asked him why U.S. and NATO officials have deemed this report to be irrelevant. Take a listen. It's not that it's irrelevant. It's that it is the report or certain significant parts of it directly contradict the uh, Pentagon's official position that progress is being made in the war. The report, in fact, suggests, and this is based strictly on what the Taliban are telling their interrogators at the Bagram airfield north of Kabul, they think they're winning the war. They're not defeated. Uh, they have every intention of fighting through to victory. Uh, they have absolutely no desire for con you know, any conciliatory measures, no negotiations, nothing. I mean, this is not the attitude that you would find from a, a beaten enemy. And talk a little bit more about what this report has revealed that may make Washington uncomfortable. Well, the, I, I mean, the, the top, if I was writing a lead for an article, the lead would be uh, Taliban, feisty, still strong, and uh, expect to win. Uh, the, you know, the vast majority of the, uh, the Taliban prisoners who were interrogated admitted that we, they took terrible losses in 2011, but that's nothing new. They've taken terrible losses for the last 10 years, and yet they keep coming back. They're one of the most resilient insurgencies uh, the U.S. military has ever faced, and maybe we haven't given them the credit that they deserve for being that tough. And uh, you know, the, the report bears out the fact that they are, in fact, uh, resilient, that they are, uh, and they really, really believe, despite losing thousands of people, they expect eventually to win. Um, and certainly resilient seems to be the word after a decades-long war over there um, and still no clear victory. The report also reveals Taliban prisoners and their collaboration with the Pakistani military. Talk about what this means with, for U.S. relations with Pakistan. Well, our relations with Pakistan are so bad right now, <laughs> it, it doesn't really harm uh, our, our diplomatic relation with the Pakistanis any more than it already stands. Uh, the Pakistani foreign minister has already said this is basically old wine in a new bottle, you know, to paraphrase her, her comments. So the Pakistanis are doing what they have done for the last 10 years when confronted with evidence of uh, complicity with the Afghan Taliban, which is basically to deny, deny, and then throw blame elsewhere. Uh, you know, the report does contain some new details. Uh, one is that the, every one of the prisoners interrogated knew about the, the uh, collaboration with the Pakistanis. Uh, but what came as a bit of a surprise, the fact that the Taliban uh, did not like their Pakistani handlers very much. Uh, they thought they were very patronizing and bossy. Uh, which is, I guess, you know, a client uh, relationship, uh, you know, gone sour. So I don't know what that means for the future, but I, I think the relationship is now pretty well defined. I think everyone in Washington knows that uh, Pakistan has been, you know, covertly you know, supporting the Taliban, just that the White House refuses to say it publicly. Well, this certainly is more proof of that. Another thing the report shows, um, kind of suggesting that all terrorists, um, at least in their eyes, are not created equal. The Taliban, that they, they don't like working with al-Qaeda. Um, and so, I mean, how does this shake up some perceptions uh, that the U.S. has about relations between these two groups? Well, it's, again, this is not so much a secret. Uh, uh, back in 2008, when I went to... Uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan for the first time, I was told by uh, 
we'll call them cutouts for the Taliban, that they viewed al-Qaeda as anathema, meaning basically that uh, they said, look, uh, the al-Qaeda had its day in court. It had their time. They drove us from power by their presence in Afghanistan. They brought the U.S. troops in, forced us you know, into hiding, and we've never forgiven them for that fact. This is what I was being told uh, now almost four years ago. Uh, it was clear from my interviews four years ago that there, is, there was deep tension between the two. The Taliban thought they were better fighters, where the Al-Qaeda, they, they termed to be sort of weekend soldiers. Uh, they didn't really do a lot of fighting. They spent most of their time hiding out in villages in northern Pakistan. But, you know, this report basically confirms what has already been known that, which, by the way, you know, the import of this is that, remember, President Obama justified the doubling of the size of U.S. forces in Afghanistan back in 2009 on the presumption that, you know, we're going to keep Afghanistan from going, you know, falling back into the hands of al-Qaeda. Well, al-Qaeda isn't in Afghanistan, and the Taliban confirmed that. Uh, and so some parts of this report have been leaked to a couple of media outlets. I want to point out a specific quote here that is quite telling. Uh, quote, many Afghans are already bracing themselves for an eventual return of the Taliban. The Afghan government continues to declare its willingness to fight, yet many of its personnel have secretly reached out to insurgents seeking long-term options in the event of a possible Taliban victory. Um, so this shows that the Taliban um, may be working with our allies, and I can imagine that these arguments um, going behind the scenes is something that uh, the U.S. isn't very happy about. No, this is the one part of the report. I've, I've been told by friends of mine at the Pentagon, this is the one part of what is leaked out about this report that has the U.S. government, and the, especially the Pentagon, absolutely furious. Uh, any suggestion that our uh, Hamid Karzai's government and the, and the Afghan military and police are covertly working with the Taliban uh, is a diplomatic disaster. I mean, but again, this is one of those, it's an open secret. If you go to Afghanistan and talk to any U.S. soldier, they will tell you they know that the Afghan, their Afghan army or police partners, they know there's a secret agreement uh, with the local Taliban unit. A, a report came out in May of last year by a man named Dr. Jeffrey Boyden, which nobody has picked up on, and where he lists all the sort of like the top ten peeves of U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. And at the very top of the list is the fact that you know, the soldiers said, we're fighting and dying, uh, we're at, and we're dying in part because our Afghan allies are feeding the Taliban with information uh, to facilitate the attacks. And this does not bode well for the fact that these are the soldiers. This is the government, and these are the soldiers we are going to turn the country over to when we start withdrawing our troops later on this year. That was Matthew Aid, intelligence specialist and author of the book, The Secret Century, The Untold History of the National Security Agency.